Hello folks. Well, most of my subscribers have seen my retractable landing gear module that I made and have used on my DJI Phantom, the Flame Wheel 550, the T580, my uh, Blade 350, and the Wakara QR 350. Well, it works great on them, so it was only a matter of time, as you know, since because since last summer when I shot this video with my D700 and the camera on the side, I realized there may be a need to put the camera where it's supposed to be, right under the CG. But the landing gear, no matter how small, still seems to be in the view, and it's a low clearance on helicopters. Well, folks, by now you should probably know how to build these retract modules if you've watched my other videos. I use those $10 electric retracts from Nitro Planes, and they work perfect every time. And again, this time I made the second radio from an unused 2.4 gigahertz transmitter and wired it so the switch could use the same landing gear switch which is unused on the D700 transmitter. It's perfect and right where I can reach it. I could put a jack there and change these from transmitter to transmitter. I also use one of my favorite things for the landing gear skids and that is the standard Metamucil jar. I cut it so the ridges keep it firm and just simply bolted it right on where the other LG was. Well, as well as quadcopters take pictures, uh, no one could argue that helis are the worst to take a video from due to the vibration. It's kind of like the vibration we had on the Huey gunships in Nam, but at a way higher frequency. Cameras don't like that at all, and the helicopters vibrate, period. No matter how much you tell yourself yours is running smooth, slap a camera on there and you're going to see. I will say that I like the Sony because it's directly down the center line where the GoPros have to be mounted offset in order to be down the center line of your vehicle. You know, I've tried all the Jillo pads, the hookups, the gyro gimbals, everything. It's just not hardly worth it. You don't really see a big difference. Vibration is going to be there. Anyway, this may not be the prettiest looking unit in the world, but most prototypes are not very pretty anyway. Uh, you know, when you're doing aerial photography and stuff, you don't care what it looks like as long as you get the job done. And I've also since painted the balls of fluorescent orange, because taking away the landing gears at my age and failing eyes, this helps me a lot to fly. And you know, if you can't see it, you can't fly it. Okay folks, 16 degrees out here, not a whole lot of wind, so that probably help. Let's see how she goes. Trim this thing to the right a little. Landing gear down, bring this baby down.
You know, this was fun to make, and uh, even if you didn't have a camera you want to hang under there and you wanted to build a scale model like a uh, Airwolf or something with three tracks, you could do it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks a lot for joining me today, folks. I really appreciate you stopping by, taking the time to watch this, and hopefully... Have a little fun with me. You know, part of the fun for me is just trying to keep my brain busy and do stuff, you know. Just remember, folks, if it sounds stupid, but it works, it ain't stupid.